Referencing someone that I've got to say, uh, I do actually remember from my younger years, make of my sense of humour then what you will, he talks about Roy Chubby Brown. Do you remember him? Uh, he, he points out that he was banned from a certain venue because organisers said it was not appropriate for their audience. But he goes on to say that he does fill venues where he performs. So why don't you let the public decide and stop this workness? Well, that's Malcolm's view. Uh, let me know yours. Very briefly, I'll move on to this next story. Sorry about my tangent there, but I think it's a very important one. Uh, now, you might have seen the TV presenter, Kirsty Olsop. She has sparked a, a heated debate after suggesting that young people could afford to buy a house if they stop paying for Netflix and gym memberships and coffees, etc. She goes on to say that young people could move in with their parents or find houses up north. Hmm. By the way, I think it's worth pointing out that Kirsty, I think she uh, got a bit of family help to get on uh, the property ladder herself, which is very nice if you can get it, but most people cannot. Lucy, is it simple for all these people that just sit there saying, I can't get on the housing ladder, it's is not. the answer? Well, cancel your Netflix and your gym membership then, away you go. I think we taught that up. That's probably about 100, to, I mean, I don't know, but cancelling all, it doesn't add up over a period of time that you would need to get the average house prices in this country of quarter of a million pounds. Um, I mean, if you're looking at the uh, cost of living crisis, the increase, the increase in inflation, um, increase in energy bills, even here in London, just getting a, a renting out a house is about £2,000 for a two-bed flat in Zone 2. So you're paying the majority of your income on rent anyway. So it makes it almost next to impossible to save up for a deposit. And without family help, I just don't see a way forward for ordinary young people across the country. Nigel? Well, just, things have changed. That um, uh, Houses used to be um, an awful lot cheaper relatively to what they are now. And wages haven't gone up at the same kind of rate as the housing market. So it is obviously going to become much more difficult if you're starting out as a first time buyer to get that amount of money together to actually go and buy a house. And, you know, as Lucy says, deposits themselves are a problem. In fairness, governments have tried to get round that, but still haven't. And I really feel for young people today how difficult it is to actually get on the housing market. Lee? Yeah, I mean, it's a ridiculous comment and it's so, uh, it's so ill-founded. You have to think it's just made for, to be provocative. I mean, if you were born in the 1950s, you could buy an average home in your 20s, so in 1979, let's say, for £16,800. That's four times the average pay. Today, house prices are 14 times higher and wages have only risen, risen sevenfold. So the average home today costs over eight times the average salary and the average age at which people can buy has gone up from early 20s to 33. So house price growth has been double wage growth. That's the underlying problem, that we're not building enough houses in this country and houses have become an investment asset rather than something for people to live in. That's the problem that young people have today. It's not the fact that they're spending £6 a month on Netflix. Mm, you guys, um, lots of your thoughts coming in on all the things we've been um, talking about.